In years gone by, Newcastle have been a top example of a selling club, getting shot of their biggest assets for huge profits, much to the dismay of supporters. This summer, Newcastle actually needed to trim their squad to drum up funds for new signings, so let's look at the most expensive 11 that Newcastle have ever sold. In goal it's Shea Given. The high school Irishman is the best goalkeeper Newcastle have had this century, which is why it was such a blow when he departed in January of 2009. Despite manager Joe Kinnear stating that the club was not interested at all in selling him, Given joined Manchester City for £6 million, relatively cheap for a goalkeeper now when you see the prices paid for Edison and Pickford, and while the Republic of Ireland International headed to the newly rich Manchester City, Newcastle sank in the six months without him and were relegated to the Championship. At right back we've got Matthew Debushi. When Newcastle signed Matthew Debushi for £5.5 million in January of 2013, it looked like an absolute steal, picking up a French international for a relatively small fee. After a tough start, Debushi showed his worth and his performance would eventually lead to his exit from the North East. In July 2014, Debushi was gone, as he joined Arsenal for £12 million. Debushi got his wish and joined a Champions League club, and the Newcastle owners got what they wanted with a huge profit margin. Unfortunately for Debushi, his Arsenal dream has turned into a nightmare due to injury and the emergence of Hector Bellerin. Our first centre back is Jonathan Woodgate. Like Debushi, Woodgate would only last a season and a half at St James's Park. Having arrived from Leeds for £9 million in January of 2003, the defender got an offer he couldn't refuse in the summer of 2004, with Real Madrid paying £13.4 million to take the Englishman to the Bernabeu. A top class defender whose career was blighted by injury, an own goal and two yellow cards on his debut summed up how unlucky Woodgate was throughout his career. He's alongside Sebastian Bassong. The big centre half makes Matthew Debushi and Jonathan Woodgate look like veterans in comparison. Bassong spent just one season with the Magpies, in which he was named the club's player of the season as they dropped in at the championship in 2009. Following relegation, something that would become a recurring theme for Bassong throughout his career, the Cameroon international stated his intentions to leave Newcastle and he would join Tottenham for £8 million. Now at 31 years of age, Bassong is a free agent and has arguably never looked as good as he did in that one and only season at Newcastle. At left back it's Jose Enrique. Another player who thought the grass was going to be greener, Jose Enrique ended his love affair with Newcastle by joining Liverpool, stating that he wanted to be playing in Europe. The left back had become a great player in black and white after a rough start life in the North East, but in August 2011 Enrique was off, joining the Reds for £7 million. Newcastle would actually go on to finish above Liverpool that season and Enrique would end up in goal on his return to St James's. There was egg on Enrique's face in front of 50,000 screaming Geordies as he wore an oversized goalkeeper's shirt. Calm as a bitch, right? Moving into midfield, we've got Andros Townsend. Newcastle signed Andros Townsend for £12 million in January of 2016 as they looked to avoid relegation. Despite the winger's best efforts, scoring four times in 13 appearances, the Magpies went down and Townsend was left to reassess his options. In an attempt to rescue his England career, Townsend jumped ship and joined Crystal Palace for £13 million. The midfielder's first season at Selhurst Park didn't quite go as planned and he's been linked with the move back to St James's Park ever since, much to the delight of the Toon Army who would love to see Townsend back in a Newcastle shirt. Next up we've got Johan Kabay. Another player who arrived during the French Revolution at Newcastle, Kabay was easily the pick of that bunch which is why his exit stung that little bit more. The midfielder spent two and a half seasons at Newcastle, helping the Magpies finish in 5th place in the Premier League in 2012 and then reaching the quarter-finals of the Europa League the following year. It would go sour though in 2013 when Kabay tried to force a move to Arsenal by going on strike and by the time the following transfer window in January 2014 came around, Kabay was gone, joining PSG for £19 million, back when the thought of signing Neymar for 10 times that much would probably get you booked. Kabay hardly succeeded in Paris and was back in the Premier League not long after, joining Crystal Palace. Our third midfielder is Musa Sissoko. There aren't many ex-Magpies that Newcastle fans hate as much as Musa Sissoko. His incompetent performances combined with his constant insistence that he should be playing in the Champions League makes Sissoko a criminal on Tyneside, but the Geordie still can't believe Tottenham paid £30 million for him last summer. In a real life case of daylight robbery, Mike Ashley and co took Spurs to the cleaners for a man who played his part in seeing Newcastle relegated to the Championship. Subsequently and unsurprisingly, Sissoko flopped at White Hart Lane and could be heading towards the exit door, 
but not before he faces the St James's Park return this Sunday. Next we've got James Milner. It's nine years since James Milner left Newcastle. Since then, Newcastle have been relegated and promoted twice, while James Milner has gone from being a junky winger to a reliable midfielder who won two Premier League titles at Manchester City to a makeshift left back under Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool, who was apparently really boring. That's James Milner, not Jurgen Klopp. The former England international would join Aston Villa in the summer of 2008 for £12 million, as Kevin Keegan's relationship with the owner Mike Ashley began to unravel. And while it all went apart for Keegan at Newcastle, things just got better and better for Milner, who was one of the few players who have gone on to further their careers after leaving the North East. Playing behind the striker, it's Jorginho Wijnaldum. Since Mike Ashley took over the club, Newcastle have never spent more on one player than they did for Genie Wijnaldum, paying PSV Eindhoven £14.5 million in 2015. During his one season at Newcastle, the Dutchman scored 11 times, all of which came at St James's Park, and Wijnaldum was straight out the door following relegation. Liverpool stumped up 23 million quid for Wijnaldum, who probably didn't fancy the scrap in the Championship, and headed to Anfield, where he's still yet to score a Premier League goal away from home. And finally, up front it's Andy Carroll. The most expensive player Newcastle have ever sold in their history, and one that potentially hurt the fans the most. After a blistering start to his first season as Newcastle number 9, in which he scored 11 times in 19 games, Liverpool turned their attentions to the big Geordie striker following Fernando Torres' move to Chelsea. £35 million was enough to get Carroll, who flew to Merseyside in Mike Ashley's helicopter, despite the striker's desire to stay and sign a new contract. The move to Anfield didn't work out for Carroll, and he's now at West Ham either scoring overhead kicks or being treated by the club doctor, all the while being linked with a move back to Newcastle that will never happen. So that's Newcastle's most expensive sold 11, let us know what you think in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and check out our newest channel, HITC7s.